Hello, I'm Anita Taylor. I'm the Dean of Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design, and I'm really delighted to welcome you to the Master Showcase 2020. It's a really brilliant and fantastic pleasure to have you join us this evening for this online showcase. Naturally, we're disappointed that it isn't a physical degree show, but once again, we realise that we're able to share the work of our graduates with many people across the city, across the country and internationally through the online showcase. And we hope that you'll really enjoy looking at the work. Hi, my name is Sharon Campbell and I am the Discipline Lead for Communication Design. Um, I'm here on behalf of Phil Vaughan, who is the Programme Director in Animation and Visual Effects. First of all, I want to say a huge congratulations to all the animation and visual effects students. The work that you have managed to achieve is incredible considering the circumstances. Um, and so I want to encourage everyone to take some time to browse through some of the wonderful short films and showreels that were produced by this year's Masters of Animation and VFX students. During their one year of study, the students have looked at pre-production, post-production, and of course, production of animation and visual effects using industry standard software. The unique thing about the course is that we blend creative and technical skills. So we look at story in depth, but we also look at technical processes, utilizing software such as Maya, Nuke, and other compositing software that is industry standard. Every year our students have the opportunity to do a live project with an industry partner. And this year we worked with Dupe VFX, who is the world's first VFX B Corporation company. A lot of our graduates go on to work in TV, film, animation and games. We have some of our students going to studios like Industrial Light and Magic <coughs> and NPC, working in Vancouver, working in Bangalore, all over the world. We have really strong connections with industry and we do internships and placements. I have no doubt that this year's cohort will go on to great things and I wish them all the best in their future careers. In a moment, animation and VFX student Mike Middleton will tell you about his master's project. But first, we take a look at some of the work within the animation and VFX master's showcase. Coming up after, you will hear about this year's MFA, Art and Humanities. So do stay tuned. Hi folks, I'm Mike Middleton and I was one of the students on the VFX and Animation Masters course here at Dundee. Previously, I had some experience up in Aberdeen studying architecture, but left to pursue a career in 3D modelling. I came to Edinburgh and started working part-time and studying on my own when I had some free time. It was a very long and slow process, so I decided to apply to this course to help fast track my career. I had been flying with the idea for a while about taking a master's degree, but was only looking for a course to do 3D modeling solely. All the courses I found involved some other form such as animation. However, after talking to many different professionals and course leaders from all over Scotland, I was advised to check out this course at Dundee. The reasoning behind this advice was a good 3D artist knows their position in a production pipeline. The animation of VFX course at Dundee takes each student through the entire pipeline from inception to production, 
with the final outcome in semester three being a short film. You learn and usually take part in every part of the production process. I was advised that most artists tend to start or are favourable as 3D generalists, who are essentially the jack of all trades. So this was the course for me. We had a really good mix of students on the course, with most of them having 3D modelling knowledge. So during the group work, this was my opportunity to take on and learn some new tasks. I did things such as photogrammetry, photo bashing, compositing and digital matte painting. I've done some photo bashing in the past on architecture, but everything else was completely new to me. I'm really glad I took those challenges on. I did fairly well, I think, and it was good fun, and it's definitely something to add on to the CV. During semester one and two, the students are expected to develop their story. This can take the form of storyboarding, character art, environment art, or writing up a story, whatever helps them to develop their story through. In semester three, the students should then be ready to begin production on their final film. I took my film on as a solo project with nowhere to hide. I feel so much more confident for now with my abilities, especially in modeling. Seeing my work through each stage, I could see how each step affects the next, where errors can arise and where the process can be improved. Before this course, I had branded myself and was blinkered to the view that I was a hard surface modeler, but I was able to create a character I was happy with during the course. This involves sculpting, which is something I've never done either digitally or traditionally. I had a lot of fun using the software and easily spent about a third of my time creating the, car the character from designing, modeling, rigging and texturing, which is all things that I hadn't done before. My film takes place in the future and focuses on a woman who has been involved in a serious road accident and abducted by a company that creates prototype weapons. Her brain is to be used to control a robotic body, but during testing she wakes up and attempts to escape. The initial inspiration for the film came from my love for the magazine series Nothing But Mech, curated by Lauren Wood. It's a collection of mechanical designs and robots from artists from all over the world. Cinematically, I took some inspiration from Robocop, Ghost in the Shell and Blade Runner. I love their style and message and what's cooler than robots. My final film, as well as the films of the rest of the students, is available on the Dundee Showcase page. Students working on their craft over the last few months have shown real determination and passion to continue working under lockdown conditions. We are all striving to better ourselves, even when things seem uncertain, but remember, it's more important than ever that we have artists of every kind. Lockdown has brought to light more than ever our dependency on artists from every profession, from watching movies together with our lockdown buddies, sharing artwork that moves us, listening to songs that reminds us of people and places that we can't visit, to playing video games, to escape to a different world entirely. Art of every form connects us all. Keep filling the world with art. Congratulations to everyone who's graduated this year and good luck to everyone starting and continuing their education.
I'm Kath Key, Course Director of the MFA Art and Humanities. I'm delighted to be here tonight to tell you about the MFA Art and Humanities and to give you a look at the work our students are displaying in their Master's Showcase this year. The MFA Art and Humanities is an intensive one year long interdisciplinary course that brings together artistic research and experimentation, theoretical thinking and critical making. Our students develop their potential to become critically informed artists and theorists. They are given the opportunity to work across a wide range of workshops and facilities, allowing them to immerse themselves in their practice and expand beyond the studio environment. To further enhance their critical thinking, we teach art history that is global, including First Nations, so not just the Western art canon. Our students are encouraged to undertake ambitious investigation and inquiry through their in individual research. The outcomes of that research is clear to see in the vast array of work showcased this year. Our students go on to a variety of careers. Some of them are award-winning artists and designers. We also have curators and those who have gone on to teaching and further research degrees. With the talent that's on show this year, I'm certain that this cohort will follow in the footsteps of their predecessors and make their unique mark in the world. But before I pass you on to Jingwen Zhang, or Iris, who will tell, her about, tell us about her work, I just want to say a heartfelt well done to each of my students. You've all managed to create amazing, diverse and exciting work, and you should be very proud indeed. So over to you, Iris. Hello everyone, I'm Jin Wen Zhang, a student of MFA Art and Humanities. I'm really excited to share my work and the story behind it. My work is inspired by a set of data from 2020 State of the World Population Report. In the past 20 years, a total of 140 million women have disappeared before and after birth. Among them, the disappeared in Asian countries accounted for 80% of global total. The data is really shocking. Also, as an Asian woman, I know that there are many male preferences in our traditional culture, and it has led many gender selections during the childbirth. But the huge number is still very concerning. Upon further investigation, I found that in China, the male population is 54 million more than female population, which led me to decide to make a work on the topic of the 54 million women who have disappeared. My work emerges from the perspective of destiny, because in my opinion, every woman living in the environment have a same or a common destiny. Even if I know that everyone's destiny is really different, but because of the male preferred environment, if we shift our eyes from the individual to a higher dimension, we will find that all the women living in the environment are the community of the destiny. And in the process of creating the work, I chose the palm print as a symbol of destiny because everyone's palm print is really different. And in different cultures, the palm print also has the functions of governing the future and relieving fate. And I collected 100 Chinese women's palm prints. Some of them are my family and friends, and some are just strangers. They have a really different life and destinies. And I put all the photos of the Chinese women's palm prints together to make a video. And I want to use this way to show the relationships between the individual and the collective destiny. In addition, I also drew the palm prints on the bed and the wall. In this work, a bed symbolized my body. The bed covered with palm prints is a kind of metaphor that represents that a woman imprisoned by her fate. And in this work, the bed is my avatar, and it also can be the avatar of any other woman. I always think that everyone living in this world is just like the line in the palm print. Each line in the palm print seems really unique, but those lines together form a really complete uh, palm print that defines the fate. This work explores the relationship between individual destiny and the destiny of community. And I hope do something for the women who have disappeared and the women who are living in the male-preferred environment. 
I hope and believe in the near future, the gap between the number of the males and females will decrease. And I also hope everything goes well with 2020 Master Show. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. It's incredible what you've managed to achieve in such difficult circumstances. The showcase looks amazing, and I wish you all the very best for the future. Hi. As we're doing things alphabetically tonight, I am back again on behalf of Phil Vaughan, the Programme Director for the MDES in Comics and Graphic Novels. Throughout their study, the students gain an in-depth understanding of the comics medium and the industry and also practice creating their comics. Right from the beginning with script writing, thumbnails, pencils, inks, lettering, colouring and production methods. As the home of DC Thompson, producers of iconic titles such as The Beano, The Dandy and Commando, Dundee is the perfect base for studying comics. Our students benefit from close links that we have with industry, allowing them to work on live projects and, through our guest speaker programme, soak up all the knowledge and expertise from some of the industry's top comics artists. The variety of stories, themes and artistic styles coming out of this year's cohort is a testament to how each individual has grown and developed their own personal authorship. Projects range from a look at life in lockdown to a post-cataclysm world where the remnants of humanity live in a mundane existence and enormous floating cities, as well as stories of love, hate and unbreakable bonds in the Inca Empire and the retelling of the story of Medusa. I highly recommend that you take a look through the students' pages on the Master's Showcase website to experience the wonderful array of comics and graphic novels that have been created by the class of 2020. Well done to the students. You've been brilliant. I'm pleased to have Nick Johnson here to tell you about the creation of and the inspiration behind his work. I'll pass him over to you and tell, to tell you more. Uh, hi, my name is Nick Johnson. 
rolling, boom! And I am enrolled in the Masters in Comics and Graphic Novels program at the University of Dundee. I can't even believe the whole year has passed already, but one of my favorite things about the program was the many new influences and research that my teachers and tutors have introduced. There's a whole bunch of new ideas and new creators that have really influenced my practice. It's probably the most amount of work in comics and writing about comics that I've ever done. And the amount that I have learned in such a short amount of time is, is crazy. I had a blast. I'm exhausted, but I had a really great time. Uh, the work I made was uh, far more diverse than the stuff I usually do. Fidgeting is what I do. But because I took such a, a wide range of classes, things like autobiography, adaptation, science fiction, I was able to really stretch my creative muscles the most challenging aspect of the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown during this semester, I was at home most of the time. That would pretty much be what my life was like beforehand because we were working so hard on comics and trying to meet these deadlines. But the one thing that I just couldn't get over was I missed my fellow students and the inspiration and the good times that they provide. I'm really hoping that we get a chance to reconnect after all is said and done. So the remedy, the remedy, the remedy, oh. <laughs> So The Remedy is my final project. It is a sci-fi story that is all about Earth post-cataclysm. It's a world covered in water, and the remnants of humanity survive in these enormous floating cities. This bland, boring, mundane utopia is suddenly thrown into a state of chaos with the arrival of these six dreamlike renegades who model themselves after art historical movements from the past, and they use art and technology to upset the system. There is one detective, and he is determined to find out who these people are, what they want, and why they know so much about the mysterious death of his husband. What I was really excited about doing was creating an idea that would pay homage to all of these cyberpunk genre greats, but it would add new influences, surrealism and Jungian dream theory, horror, and art history to create something new, to create a fusion of different styles uh, so that it wasn't just your, your typical cyberpunk, but it had something new to say, and it had a look that was its own. My advice for future students of the program is have a plan about the kinds of things you want to explore. Have certain things about your work that you really want to uh, get better at. Don't improvise on me. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side of that same coin, be open to new influences, be open to new ideas. As a result, I created work that is very special to me, and that I never would have created if I hadn't come here. To my fellow graduates, I would just say congratulations on creating work of such a high quality, especially in such challenging times. You all are creating work that shines. Just make sure you show it to as many people as possible. Keep making stories. Just tell stories that are personal, that matter to you, that engage emotionally with people, because I think that's what we need. Sincere stories from people who are looking to connect. Woo! Yeah, we're doing it! Yeah! It did oh. it. Uh, are we done? Come on. Hey, Nick Johnson. So who are you? You just said my name. <laughs>
just like to add my congratulations to all my comics, animation and VFX students who are graduating this year. It's been an exceptional year and the work has been produced under exceptional circumstances and I wish you all the best. Well done. Thank you to Sharon and Kath, as well as Mike, Irene and Nick for providing us with that interesting look at the courses. Later, you'll hear about the MSc in Medical Art, Forensic Art and Facial Identification and Product Design. But first, I'm really delighted to introduce Professor David Maguire, the Interim Principal and Vice-Chancellor of the University of Dundee, who wants to say a few words ahead of this year's prize-giving ceremony. Thank you, David, and welcome. Hello, everyone. As university principal, I'm delighted to join you in the celebration of all the achievements and the amazing work of all DJ CAD Masters students. I don't want to focus on what we are missing, but I do acknowledge that this is a bittersweet moment, as this isn't the Masters show experience anyone would have envisaged before COVID-19 came along. But I want us all to enjoy this moment, to celebrate the many wonderful successes with families and friends, even if it is at a distance. Now, I only started with the university in February, and I've had to spend most of my time here working from home, as have the vast majority of our staff and our students. But even in this relatively short time, and at the necessary remove, I have strongly sensed the creative energy that is here in Dundee, with DJ CAD very much at the heart of it all. At our graduate showcase earlier in the summer, celebrating the work of our outstanding undergraduates, I was truly impressed by the talent, the technical expertise, the workmanship, and the imagination that was on show at that event. I have the same feelings of awe, intrigue, and respect again seeing the incredible work of our master's students. The breadth of work is impressive, the quality is outstanding. It is in times like these where I think that art and design have a particularly powerful role to play. We all need something to lift our souls, to put a spark in our day, to enliven and to inspire us all at a time when so much of our lives has been necessarily constrained. And that is what this showcase has done for me. And I know it will provide that stimulus, that joy, that questioning for many more. So well done to all of you, our Masters Class of 2020. Thank you, David, for joining us this evening. It's now the moment I'm sure everyone's been waiting for. It's an important part of our Masters Showcase event and it's the prize giving. Remember that you can add your comments and well wishes in the comments box below the video. So without further ado, I'm going to read out the award winners. So the Duncan of Jordanston Postgraduate Award is awarded to two students, Mike Middleton, Animation and VFX, and Nick Johnson of Comics and Graphic Novels. Huge congratulations, Mike and Nick, on receiving that award. The Duncan of Jordanston's Master's Prize, which is awarded for each programme, goes to Rachel Q, Maria Giovanni, Jason McKenna, Rebecca Smith, and Jakub Stabanovich. Huge congratulations, all five of you. It's really amazing and well done. For citizenship within the academic community, again, we have a duo uh, award winner or award winners, Nick Johnson and Mike Middleton. So many congratulations, Nick and Mike, again on your award. Well done. And for Medical and Forensic Art, there are two awards. There's an award for the best third semester project in Medical Art, and that's awarded to Laura Jane Logue, and the best third semester project for Forensic Art and Facial Identification 
is awarded to Leonie Robert Shaw. Huge congratulations, Laura Jane and Leonie. Well done. Congratulations to all our winners tonight. The night's not over yet though, we still have lots more to tell you about. I'm Lynn Morrison, lecturer on the MSc in Forensic Art and Facial Identification course. I'm so pleased to be here tonight to showcase the work of this year's Forensic Art and Facial Identification graduates. Forensic Art is the presentation of visual information in relation to legal procedures. It encompasses subjects such as facial anthropology and identification. This year, our students have been working on a variety of projects which showcase how their skills can aid in the identification of victims of crime, missing persons or human remains, help with the identification, apprehension or conviction of criminals and give a face to individuals from the past. This year's projects include a wax facial reconstruction of a Roman woman for the Women at the Age of Empire project, a research project around composite sketches of EastEnders characters, and 3D digital models of teeth showing different types of trauma for the dental school to aid forensic odontologists. You can see all the projects on the Master Showcase website, so do take some time to look through them. Before setting upon their final project, our students start the year by being given a strong foundation in anatomy, observational drawing and anatomical illustration and sculpting skills. They have the benefit of learning practical techniques involved in a range of forensic art applications, including facial reconstruction, post-mortem depiction, age progression and composite sketching. The outcome of this learning is clear to see in the interesting, highly detailed and relevant projects they're exhibiting in the Master Showcase. I would just like to say well done to you all. This has been a challenging year, but you've worked through it and produced some excellent work. I wish you all the very best for the future and do please keep in touch. During their time at Dundee University, the forensic art students work closely with the MSc medical art students. And in a moment, Caroline Erlin will tell you more about the medical art showcase. But first, Let's take a look at the projects of the Forensic Art and Facial Identification, Class of 2020. Caroline Erlin, course director for the MSc in Medical Art. I hope you're all enjoying the evening so far. We have two more areas to cover before the end of the night. The showcase has over 60 of our recent graduates showcasing their work, so trying to cover everything in one hour really doesn't do it justice. So make sure to make time to have a browse through all of the work online. Unlike the physical show, the website isn't going anywhere, meaning you can keep coming back and discovering more. Medical art encompasses a wide range of applications, from patient communication and information to medical teaching and training. It's also used by the pharmaceutical industry to help explain their products and in the courtroom to help lay jury members understand complex topics. As you will see on the showcase website, medical artists produce work in a wide range of media, including traditional illustrations as well as interactive 3D models and animations. As with forensic art and facial identification, the medical art students are first given a strong foundation in anatomy, observational drawing and anatomical illustration skills, before moving on to more specialised projects later in the year. We work closely with the NHS, the Institute of Medical Illustrators and the Medical Artist Association of Great Britain, ensuring our students are industry ready upon graduation. This year, our students have been working on live briefs, such as creating e-learning resources for anatomy, 
as well as self-directed projects covering topics from the sensory impact of dementia to web resources for intersex individuals. I hope you'll enjoy looking through all of the fascinating projects on display in the Masters Showcase. And finally, I just wanted to say how proud I am of this year's cohort, who've managed to not only complete their studies during these turbulent times, but to create truly excellent resources along the way. The final course being showcased tonight is the MSc in Product Design, and you'll shortly be hearing from course director Fraser Bruce. But first, let's take a look at some of the projects in the Medical Arts Showcase, after which we'll be joined by Alicia Greenway from Forensic Art and Facial Identification, and Rosie Malone from Medical Art, who will be discussing their projects and time studying at the University of Dundee. And I'm Rosie and I've just completed the MSc in Medical Art. Although we're on different master's courses, the medical and forensic artists work closely together throughout the year, as anatomy and scientific methods inform all of our artistic decisions. Because we work so closely with each other, we wanted to tell you about our courses together. The forensic artists were a small cohort this year, with all five of us producing some truly beautiful work. Allowing scientific knowledge and principles to drive our work while still producing coherent, aesthetic and useful pieces is very challenging. Looking at the quality of our final projects, I think we did an amazing job. This year, as final projects, we reconstructed three faces from archaeology, tested methodology for witness composite sketching and produced a resource for forensic odontology. Our art is a really impactful tool in forensic cases and lends itself to a digital medium. However, archaeological reconstructions, like the one I did for my thesis, can be a really wonderful tool for physical engagement, allowing the public to connect in a personal way to our shared past. Creating physical sculptures and other artwork from our kitchen table has been a huge challenge that we've had to overcome. Digital reconstructions also require specialist hard and software. One of our artists used the pandemic to explore non-conventional digital methods for creating reconstructions. I think it's fair to say that our flexibility and ingenuity was tested over the last few months. The quality of the projects produced by the medical art students this year has been incredible and made even more impressive due to the circumstances that have come into effect during their creation. As a result, a lot of the artwork this year has been made using digital media. Quite a few of the final semester projects have been created because the students have identified a lack of information on a specific anatomical or medical topic and have created resources to address this. My own project involved creating an e-learning resource that could be used by students to remotely learn about anatomical body movements in a three-dimensional manner. This kind of resource could be especially relevant with many students currently having to embrace blended learning. Both of our courses are a really interesting blend of both art and science, and we would highly recommend checking out all of the projects in this year's showcase. Finally, we just want to say a huge thank you to Carolyn Erlin and Lynn Morrison for helping support our projects throughout the year. And a massive congratulations to all of our course mates and to all the other master's students showing off their work in this showcase. Linda from the Recruitment and Internationalisation team here. Hi to all you wonderful master's students, or indeed graduates. What a memorable year it's been for you all but hope you can see it as a year of great achievements, despite all the unprecedented hurdles. You're all truly amazing, and I wish you all much success in whatever your next chapter holds. 
Congratulations. Enjoy the well-deserved celebrations. Class of 2020. Massive well done. Hi, I'm Fraser Bruce, the Programme Director for the MSc Product Design course, the final course being showcased tonight. Even though it is purely alphabetical, I like to think we have saved the best till last, but perhaps I should let you be the judge of that. The MSc Product Design course prepares students for working in the most exciting global industries where designers meet with creative technologists. Our unique philosophy helps students to develop socially relevant design responses in a world where digital technologies are changing the way we live our lives. Ultimately, we are exploring how humans and technology co-evolve and how design and storytelling can help shape our future experiences in society. Our masters in product design students aren't simply technology or making for the sake of making, but rather they're making for social change and addressing some of the major societal issues of our time. To this end, the class of 2020 have developed an incredible array of projects, including a wearable technology to allow runners with visual impairment to run safely, freely and discreetly with a guide, an interactive product for reducing daily waste, food waste, and a connected device that can bring the elderly and grandchildren together with a smile on their faces. There is a huge marketplace right now that is calling out for curious designers who are collaborative, interdisciplinary and creative with technology. And this is fundamentally what makes our graduates different. Well done to all of you. You have shown, despite some unusual circumstances this year, that you are ready to take the industry by storm and will be designing our future. It has been a real pleasure working with you all. And remember the quote, I shared with you at the start of your top postgraduate journey by Paolo Coelho, the ship is safest when it's in port, but that's not what ships were built for. Now, I'll pass you over to Alicia Hu, who will be discussing her service design and mobile app project focused on helping people improve health conditions through dietary management. Alicia. Hi, I'm Alicia from Prada Design. I'm really happy to present myself in the launch event of the Masters Showcase. Um, it's a really difficult and challenging time more than ever for the students this year that everything was moved online, including the exhibition. Um, for my project, I was carrying out a service design project which required me to do a lot of research, gather some data and prototype a series of interactions. Um, my topic is focused on the area of health improvement. The main idea is to help people improve their health through dietary management. I have prototyped my service blueprint detailing all of the interactions and touch points as well as backstage support within the process. And I have realized some of the user actions, they don't necessarily happen in a sequence. So I have used some colored lines to indicate the duration of these functions, which means it could happen at any time during the period. I feel it's a clear way to communicate my concept instead of just a linear process. I was also considering how I could create values for my customers, how I could deliver value to them, how I could make my service viable in the real market. So from June till September, I was having video calls with my supervisors almost every week. So it's um, really strange, but unique. It's a really strange, but unique experience for me. Um, I'm kind of used to it. Um, I found it a quite effective way of working. Uh, we were all facing these challenges we have never encountered before. And there were times I uh, was struggling to be motivated um, that I didn't feel like doing anything. Um, because we were not in the studio as we used to be, uh, that we would know what everyone was doing. Um, but in this situation, we had to find our own motivation, our inner drive that could keep us pushing forward. Um, sometime in August, I had to transfer from UK to my home country and be in a quarantine before I could actually get home. And I still remember I was having a video call with my supervisor in the hotel and 
I kept drop, dropping off because the internet connection was bad. Um, it's really difficult to manage and I knew a lot of students had the same situation but we just finally made it. And after I was done with my project, I looked at all of the work and progress I've made step by step. Um, it's really amazing to see it because at the very first beginning, I had no idea what kind of project I'll be working on. Um, it's the discover phase. Everything was uncertain. I then moved on to narrow down to one specific direction. So that's the define phase. And I started to prototype uh, my service blueprint and keep, it, keep refining it. So it's the process of development. And finally, I tried to communicate my concept to people um, properly in a visual way. So it's a delivery. And um, for me, there's still a lot of room for improvement. I could still see a lot of imperfections. Um, but I've learned a lot. I've learned different things, different uh, skills, different techniques from different stages. So for me, um, the process counts more than the results. say a huge congratulations to all the master's students. You've come through such a difficult year and you should be so proud of what you've managed to achieve. Best wishes for the future and stay in touch. We've reached the end of our launch night. What an amazing evening it's been and I'm so glad that you could join us as we celebrate the work of this year's master's graduates. As I mentioned earlier, the website is now live for you to view 
So please do take some time to peruse the showcase and explore the fantastic achievements, the fabulous work produced by our graduating master's students. There are many thanks to make to everyone who's made this evening possible, to all of our speakers, and of course, to the fantastic master's graduates of 2020. Remember, tonight is only the beginning of our master's showcase. We have more events coming up over the next week. These include a talks programme which has been curated by our Professor of Interdisciplinary Writing, Maria Fusco. This programme, which will stream live online every evening at six between the 19th and the 23rd of October, celebrates the achievements of the Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design's master's graduates. And it will give you the opportunity to engage with renowned interdisciplinary practitioners who will be speculating on what's at stake in the world today, where we are now, what it means to produce public works in private, and why creativity is essential for society. We're really delighted to be welcoming an amazing group of guest speakers for this programme. And they include one of our alumni, Luke Fowler, Irini Papadimitriou, Lola Olufemi, Juliette Jacques, and Annie Campbell. I hope that you can join us for these events. I think they'll be really exciting and really dynamic, and they're there to showcase and reflect on aspects that are really important uh, for our graduates and for Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design. You'll find details on how to sign up for these talks on the Master's Showcase website and on our social media channels. So, all that remains to say is the most enormous congratulations to the Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design Master's Class of 2020. Wow! Many congratulations. You've been really amazing and you are amazing. Thank you so much everybody for joining us this evening. It's been wonderful to welcome everybody to the virtual Duncan of Jordanston College of Art and Design. And I know that you'll share with me and sending our master's graduates onto the best opportunities that they have, that we wish them all the very, very, very best for their futures. Thank you.